Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. My name is Chris Legaspi, and today we are going to continue the new series, Lessons from the Masters. And what this series is, is an exploration of various drawing skills, illustration skills, composition skills, skills related to um, head drawing, figure drawing, realism, realistic illustration. And uh, what we're going to do is look at uh, the great masters from the past and see what we can learn from them. And of course, every great master that we admire, especially the ones that we're going to look at in this series, you can learn many, many things from them. You can learn multiple skills or techniques from any one of their works. And today we're going to focus on figure drawing. So we're going to begin today with a brief overview of the skills in figure drawing that we're going to look at. In this video in particular, we're going to look at the work of three great masters from history, specifically Rubens, Bouguereau, and Velazquez. And here on the screen, you can see some examples of their work. And before we begin, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my free insiders email list where you'll get access to live classes like this along with other free lessons free videos free content you also get discounts on courses programs you get first access to upcoming premium classes other private live streams like this so all you have to do is go to www.drawwoodchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be a part of the insider's email list. You can also go to downloads and see some of the free content and lessons available. I have figure drawing, head drawing, color. You can even access the private Discord community. So go to drawwoodchris.com and there you can enter your email and you'll be all set. You'll be good to go. And before we begin, comment below. Where are you located? Where are you watching from? And what time is it for you? I am currently in Thailand. It's 10 Saturday morning for me. Thank you so much for joining me wherever you are. I appreciate you. Today, we are going to look at figure drawing skills. We're going to begin by looking at some beautiful works by the three masters, Rubens, Velazquez, and Bouguereau. We're going to start this discussion by we're going to focus on three specific skills. Obviously, in figure drawing, there's lots of skills that we need to accomplish beautiful, realistic figures. And these are just the three that really are the foundation of my drawing philosophy. And these three are gesture, shape, and structure. Gesture, shape, and structure. So starting with gesture. So gesture, to me, is movement, is line. And the most important line that we need to get is known as the action line or long axis. This is basically the primary action of the figure. And of course, along with the primary action of the figure, individual parts or the smaller forms, the secondary forms, have their own action, their own long axis. And here, for example, we have a drawing by the great Rubens. And you can see the beautiful long curve. Do you see the curve from his head? all the way to his foot. If you follow his head to his spine, that is the action line. That's the long axis. But then also individual parts have their own action line. The torso has one. The neck has its own action line. This arm has its own action line. This leg, this calf, lower leg. So all of those are action lines. They describe generally the movement of the figure or the form. And along with gesture going long ways, the long axis, gesture can also go up and over the form. So, for example, in this torso, we can go from the back to the front or the left side to the right side. And you can see that Rubens leads us over this form. And that is also gesture. So we're going to look at that as well. Here's another example by Rubens. He's arguably the master of gesture in figurative art and realist art, or one of the masters. And you can see just how beautiful long every line is. Look, look at this central figure's arm, 
follow that line and it just keeps going. <laughs> it just keeps going. And that is also a part of gesture. You see that just kind of keeps going around the forearm to the head, to the background, to the eye, to the nose, to the other face, to the arm, to the hand, to the fabric, to the torso, to the elbow, to the breast down to the background, da, 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 da. you can see that it's just constantly moving. That is gesture. Gesture is essentially movement, line and movement. The next skill we're going to look at is shape. And shape comes in many forms, obviously. Every thing that we want to draw has shapes, not just figures, anything. Fruit, still lives, objects, trees, mountains even, landscapes. Everything that we want to draw realistically has a shape. And the most important shape that we need to recognize is what's known as the contour. So this is the outer shape of the thing that whatever we want to draw, of course, in figures, every figure has its own contour. Of course, just like gesture, not only does the main figure have its own contour, but every smaller shape has a contour, right? The whole figure has a contour. The torso has its own contour, arms and legs, head, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, within that, the even smaller detail shapes. For example, the arm has its own shape. And of the arm, the hand has its own shape. And of the, the hand, the fingers have their own shape. And of the fingers, the fingernail has its own shape. So you see even the smallest shapes, of course have to be considered. And here we're going to look at Bouguereau. This is one of his most famous paintings here. And you can see just a beautiful silhouette. Obviously, Bouguereau is arguably the greatest figurative technical draftsman to have ever lived. He is known for his, his draftsmanship, his outstanding realism, his form modeling, edges, value control, all this good stuff. But in my opinion, he is a master at shape design. His contours are absolutely exquisite. So he is perfect to look at for contour. You could see this gorgeous painting. If you can look past the absolutely stunning detail, realism and rendering and form and lighting and value, <laughs> if you can look past all of that beautiful stuff, just pay attention to the silhouette for a moment. And you could just see how the figures really pop out how the silhouette is not hidden at all. It is quite clear and sharp and reinforced. And that is not an accident. That is not an accident. That is just technical brilliance on display here. Here we have an artist who can dazzle you with technical brilliance, but yet he still relies on the core fundamental of shape design, <laughs> believe it or not. Bouguereau is one of the greatest shape designers in history. So we'll uh, take a look at his work. And finally, the last skill is structure. So structure is, in a way, these skills in order are the progression of drawing, of realism in my philosophy. You start with the gesture, and then you define the shape. And once you have the shape, then you begin to sculpt or create structure. Structure is making something look 3D, right? Gesture and shape are two-dimensional ideas. They're flat, line and flat shapes. And then, of course, if we want realism, we want form, and that begins with structure. One of the ways to display structure is to show the form of the thing. We're going to look at the great Velazquez. And Velazquez, of course, I refer to quite a bit. I study Velazquez a lot. You can learn many things from Velazquez. And one of the things that he does well, among many, is his outstanding form. If you look at the figures, particularly in his figures, I mean, his, his portraits are out, have beautiful form as well. But look at the figures here. You can see things like three-dimensional feeling forms, right? You can look at things like box modeling, things that have a clear light side and shadow side. That's what box modeling is. It's a way to show clear light and shadow, which demonstrates clear form. And, and the corner also creates form that's part of making something feel 3D is you need a corner. You need the contour and the corner. 
the thing in the middle of the form, and then um, characteristic and position. So that means some forms need to be rounder, more spherical. Some forms need to be more cylindrical. Most of the human body is basically cylinders or eggs. And of course, the clever designer, the intelligent designer will also create boxy forms. He will push, push the boxiness, basically push the geometric quality of a form to accent and emphasize the feeling of 3D form because the closer we can get to the box, to the cylinder, to the cone, to an egg, the more we can make our flat, <laughs> flat paintings feel, look like, feel like round 3D forms. You can see this example here by Velasquez. Just look at this arm alone. Just look at this arm. You can see how, yes, it's very simple and cylindrical, but it also has a clear three-dimensional feeling because of the corner, and the corner is created by the highlight in this case. You can see that bright highlight running right down the middle. That is essentially a corner drawn by the highlight. So we'll look at some examples of that. If you look at his um, torso, right, his abdomen, you can see the beautiful light. You can see the core shadow creates the corner, and then it turns in the shadow, so box modeling there, and also recognition of form that's a cylinder form this arm is a beautiful example you can see this character in the upper left here this figure look at this shoulder wow clear box clear corner you see that corner where the core shadow is where the light and shadow meet right there that is the corner of the box that gives this arm that feeling of three-dimensional structure that's what makes this arm pop off the canvas along with this highlight as well so Velasquez is a wonderful, wonderful teacher for form modeling. Okay, we're going to look at gesture now. And here is a beautiful drawing by the great Rubens. Let's just quickly go on a journey here. Let's just take a look at this piece. And you can see the primary gesture. First, we want the primary gesture. We want the action. And that's a great way to learn from Rubens. I'll show you a couple ways that we can learn from Rubens. And if you look at my cursor here, you could see your eye is literally doing this. If you follow the curve of his back, he leads you back up to the face and then leads you back to the back and then around and around. So there's this dynamic movement. And that is, um, in my opinion, um, one of the things that makes Rubens special is that he's constantly moving your eye. He does this with gesture and line and shape. You can see the primary action of the pose is also, he's also accented it with secondary actions of forms. So the foot then takes you up to the arm and then the elbow points you back up to the face. And then the lines of the face, the brow, lines in the hair, the ear lead you back over to the back. And then once you're in the back, shoom, 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 you're back in this swirl. And of course you can come out. You can come out from the leg. Let me try to draw. Right from the head, you have this, that's the primary. And then you have some secondary. You can go this way. You can go this way. You can go this way. You can follow the foot, which will take you in multiple directions. The elbow leads you up, the face leads you up, the background leads you up, the arm leads you up and down, the contour of the back, contour of the back, contour of the back, contour of the leg, the foot leads you back up, the hand leads you back in. So there's lots of secondary gestures, supporting gestures. And of course, things go over the form. Let's look at that separately. So along with the primary gesture, we have uh, moving along the form, right? Along the form, the long axis, the action. Remember, the figure has a action, and then each separate individual form has a long action, uh, long axis, the action. And that's along. Now we also want to go over, and Rubens is a master of going 
over the form, over. You see how these lines, they lead you over, over the form to create the illusion of 3D that we so desperately want. Over, over the leg, over the back, over the back, over the arm. Over the arm, over the elbow, over the forearm, over the foot. You see that even the little tiny foot over the face, of course. So you see, that is exactly what we want in our drawings. This is how we can we we can make dynamic drawings like Rubens. So if your drawings are stiff, copy Rubens. I always say, if your figures are stiff, go to Rubens and look at how he constantly is moving you around the drawing. So let's take a look at that. Okay, one way to study Rubens is with short pose. So imagine if you're doing, let's just say, a one-minute time pose. You know, my drawing philosophy is based on figure drawing training and ideally life drawing is the ideal training so life drawing we do time poses so we can simulate that by studying a master like rubens so i'm not going to time myself but i'm just going to imagine that this was a real model sitting in front of me and i only have one minute to draw and i'm looking at the drawing as if it was a model and i'm also trying to see what clues rubens gave me to help create that dynamic action what can i learn from him what can i copy from him so this is a copy and a study and a figure drawing practice and a life drawing simulation Every time I, uh, I look at Rubens, I'm just astonished. At his skill, he's skilled in so many things. It's uh, unbelievable, it's quite, it's quite a genius. And he knew he was very good. <laughs> he was the man, he was extremely, extremely wealthy and successful while he was alive which is obviously very very rare most artists that we admire are are um, <laughs> let's just say not as well known while they're alive obviously or not until they're later in their careers so let's just pretend my minute is up so this is a nice way to study the dynamic action the primary action of a Rubens. Let's see if we can um, isolate some secondary actions and forms. So another way to study Rubens or study gesture from a master is we can analyze the secondary action. So how does Rubens transition from the primary action to the secondary action and secondary forms? So for example, we have this one, we have the, the torso is clearly, this long C curve is clearly the primary action. What else is there? Well, we have the arm. Let's look at this arm. So we have a primary action of the arm, from the arm all the way to the finger. You notice that? That is important. Let's just quickly appreciate that. Look at this arm. So we know the arm starts here, right? And we know we can clearly see he designed this curve. That's not an accident. So that's the primary action. But look what he does with the fingers. 
you notice the fingers aren't just lazy. They are very precise. And they go, woof. They take you kind of in and then out and then through. So even the fingers, the little tiny insignificant seeming fingers, he put care and design into. That is unbelievable. That is unbelievable because he didn't have to do that. He didn't have to do that. And it's those small details that make separate great from good it's the attention to the small details and when the small details support your major idea and they do the major idea is long c curve arm but then these fingers continue that long c curve arm they accent it they highlight it they lead you back to the shoulder if you want he literally leads you back to the shoulder with this shadow do you see that you see that little shadow? See the arrow of that shadow? That's pointing you back up. And then there's other arrows that lead you back up too once you're there. So he's constantly leading you back up. <laughs> so that is, this is special. So I'm just going to stop here. Those of you who are watching live on a replay, this is very special because this alone this little nugget alone will make your drawing better. If you can understand what I'm saying here, understand what Rubens is doing here, this will make your drawing better. So I just want to quickly go over this again because this is important. And um, in drawing, gesture is life, really, because without gesture, the drawing is very stiff and boring and flat. We don't want that. I don't care if you're drawing someone sitting down reading a newspaper. You want some damn movement in it. We all do. Now, look at, and this is how you do it. What you do is you create and design a line or a mark or a curve, generally a curve, it's either a C or an S, generally, or semi straight, basically a curve. You design a curve and you design your form along that curve so he has a clear curve we we already saw that and then what you do is you support that curve with secondary curves secondary details so in this arm has a design a long curve from shoulder to fingertip that is important too you want the curve to be as long as possible and this the longest possible curve is from the tippy tip of your shoulder to the tippy tip of your finger. That's as long as the arm is, really. <laughs> Fingertip to the point of your shoulder, right? the acromenium, the ball, the head of your humerus. So he does that already. And then, and then he designs the fingers to lead you back up. Why? Because if you stop here, the gesture in a way dies, the movement dies, the inertia dies, the energy dies. In a way, the drawing kind of dies, and we don't want that. We want to create the illusion of life, and we do that, 2D artists do that, can do that with line. So he's constantly using line to keep you moving, and when he keeps you moving, you add life to the thing that you're looking at. You breathe life into it. The viewer breathes life into this arm, and he does that with line. How? Long axis and supporting finger, background, contour, shadow shape. Background, secondary shapes. You see that? He's saying, here's my design, and here's my design again, 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 again. He's saying, curve, move, curve, move, curve down, move up, 
curve down, move up, curve down, move up, curve down, move up. So he's like, poof, 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 poof. So what that does is it tricks you to thinking that this, you're looking at a living thing, essentially. Philosophically, that's what what what's happening here. He's tricking you into thinking this is a living thing. He's doing it with line. So that is the secret, my friends. If your figures are stiff and boring and flat, copy Rubens, copy this process. This is a process you're looking at. Long, one long line that dominates whatever you're trying to say, whatever it is, usually a curve, it's usually a C or an S, and then you support it. One long line, support it with secondary lines. And then the master will lead you back up. This is not easy to do. The master leads you back up. This is not easy to do. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> you see, lots of things are leading you up and down, down, <laughs> down, down, around, around and up. <laughs> so you see, mm, mm, that, that. Right there. I, uh, I could talk about this arm for an hour. It's that important. So anyway, uh, if you're watching this, if I haven't lost you already, please review this. Please review this and, and look at more Rubens because these 10 minutes or 15 minutes alone can change the course of your drawing right now. If you're suffering from boring and stiff drawings, review this because this is important. I just need to uh, to uh, reinforce that, you know, because um, this is important, and it's um, you know I often um, I often recommend to students to look at master works, but um, there is you know there's really no right or wrong way to look at a master work. So it's it's important to have an expert, someone with a trained eye, to kind of show you what to look for. And I think that's um, that's what I'm trying to do here. One of the things I'm trying to do. So you can see just how um, you know just by looking at the arm alone, how we can learn how to make our drawings better. And really, without good gesture. Really, in my opinion, we, we can't move forward. This is the beginning of drawing because essentially what we're drawing is line or a mark. Every drawing starts with a mark. And I would argue your first mark should be alive, should be alive, should flow, should breathe life and start to suggest life. And the beginning of life is movement. Figure drawing skill is shape. And we're going to look at the great Bouguereau. And like I mentioned, Bouguereau, at first glance, when you first look at a Bouguereau, at least for me, you're immediately dazzled. You're like, holy crap, that is amazing realism. Oh, that is an amazing elbow. That is an amazing highlight. That is an amazing core shadow. That's amazing fur. That's amazing grass that's amazing water that's amazing hair that's amazing brush technique that's amazing color right you look at all the the dazzling things that he's good at all of the full display of visual components that he's that on display which you know is there of course it's just spectacularly dazzling it's just like um you know it's true historically almost spiritually beauty it's beauty it's the height of human beauty and um of course your eyes just dazzled by by beauty but one of the things that stands out for me is his incredible shape design specifically his silhouettes and his contour contour to me is the beginning of form line is the beginning of Line describes the movement, and then shape describes the boundary of the thing, right? So the, if we're drawing figures, we need to first breathe life into it, 
And then we need to define its boundary, right? A living thing has a boundary. Like Steve Houston says, living things, human beings, organic things, animals are essentially big bags of water, right? We're, we're full of water. And without a boundary, without our skin, our skin is our outer boundary, our outer skin, our outer coat, edge, whatever, <laughs> skin. Without that, the water would, would just flow out. So human beings, things have boundaries. So for us realists, if we want to create the illusion of a living three-dimensional thing, we need to be very, very sensitive when we define the boundary of the thing because the boundary of the thing is more than just a line it's more than just separating the leg from the water the boundary of the thing begins form description and i would argue it is form description because if we want three-dimensional things right if we want a box if we want to draw a cube a three-dimensional cube, right? A box, a 3D box. We first need the sides of the box. We need the boundary of the box. And then the last thing, or if we have the boundary, then we can define the corner. So we'll look at that next, right? But we cannot, we cannot get to the corner. This is step one <laughs> corner is step two <laughs> right that's step two step one well step one is the this the sh is the line step two is the shape that's what we're going to look at today so <laughs> anyway look at look at Bouguereau. wow 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 this is a detail of one of his most famous paintings and uh, look at the boundary of this look at the contour it's just exquisite let's take a look at it now so there's many ways to study a Bouguereau. I'm just going to look at the form description of his contour. So I'm going to begin with the torso. Let's just look at the torso for now. If we have time, we'll look at the, the leg is quite interesting as well. So what I'm going to do is try to copy his drawing as best as possible. Generally, if you do a master copy, it's good to honor and respect the original as much as possible. So I'm going to honor, and what I mean by that is try try your best to match shapes and proportions, placement, right? You don't want to, um, especially if you're learning realism. Obviously, if you're learning realism, you want to also practice realism, and that comes from accurate shapes, proportions, and things like that. So I'm just trying, trying my best to, to lay in a nice torso here based on Bouguereau's torso. It's not that easy. <laughs> no, I know. Um, and if you're new to figure drawing, this, this is not going to be easy. So let's take a look at this beautiful contour just by itself. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to highlight the contour. I'm just going to take a dark tool here and just kind of see what we can learn just by looking at the shape of this torso, just by looking at the contour. So what I'm doing is I'm not just... I'm being very careful with my shape here to analyze the contour, try to get the nuance and also the, of course, the general design of it. There are beautiful little smaller bumps and lumps that we need to, to honor and respect, but we also don't want to overly emphasize them. Just like when you look at a real figure, the tendency is to over, overstate detail. Human beings have hypersensitivity to detail. So as realist artists, we need to 
in a way, untrain ourselves or retrain ourselves or whatever to be more disciplined and know when to, I don't want to say ignore, but when to tone down a detail, when to tone down a detail and when to emphasize one. That, that takes some practice. And um, Now, if you just look at this by itself, I'm going to remove the... Um, the lines here in a minute. My little construction lines. Look at that. So I removed the construction lines. Look at the clarity. In my opinion, it looks like a woman's body, a naked, a nude female figure, right? without only the contour. So that is what we want. Because this is what this is. This is human psychology. There is no figure here. There is black splotches on a gray piece of paper, right? Black marks on a gray piece of paper. Your brain, your psychology, your memories, your DNA is drawing a figure for you and that's what we want because the contour is designed so well you are forced to draw the figure for Bugaro. he is sucking you in with a skillful contour so this is important again those of you watching if your figures aren't looking real are looking off are looking cartoony our proportions are bad figures aren't clear figures don't read well review this study the contour of Bugaro because this is the effect that we want you want to be able to give the viewer enough contour information for them to draw whatever it is with their mind's eye. And that's what he's done here. And that's what skillful artists do. And that is why I personally am constantly stressing contour. You know, those of you who are in my coaching program or if you're taking my figure drawing class, you know I talk about this all the time. And uh, those of you who get critiques from me, you know, you probably heard me say this to you. Say, hey, your contour is a little off. Your contour is not clear. This is what I mean. So this is absolutely vital for success. Once we can breathe life into it with beautiful lines, then we arrange and design those lines to create shapes. And the most important shape to start with is the contour, the outer shape of the figure itself. Before we go here, one last thing. I know I've been gushing about Bugra for <laughs> I really... Uh, I just love his, his contour. It's just, every time I look at it, I go, God, man, that guy's a genius. So contour, remember this. Maybe if you're watching this, you're like, oh, Chris, I, 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 don't, I don't really pay attention to shape. I just want to render. I just want to do that shading. You know, I, I, found your, I found you from Instagram. I saw one of your shading drawings, man. Those your shading is awesome. I want to shade like you. I want to shade like Sargent, like Bugaro. Well, what you're really saying is I want 3D form. 3D form begins with 2D design. I'm going to repeat that. 3D form begins with 2D design. And Bugaro understands this. Let's take a look at this hip. If you look at this hip, right, this hip, this lower abdomen, you go, oh, my God, that is a technically genius level hip and abdomen rendering. Everyone would agree. This is genius level, technically brilliant rendering, lighting, value control, color control as well. Beautiful, right? Edges, absolutely genius. But... The trained artist understands that this 
feeling of round hip and abdomen form. It's basically like a big old egg. You see, that's like a soft, boxy egg, <laughs> which is one of my favorite things. Eggy box, boxy egg. Begins with the contour. Begins with the description of the abdomen. So let's follow our study here. The abdomen on the left side. The abdomen on the right how they relate. Notice how, I'm going to kind of exaggerate a little bit. Notice how the abdomen and the tones kind of point you this way. The abdomen here, the, if you follow the line, it kind of points you this way, up and around. So you see they're already leading to each other. On the bottom, they're pointing down and around. So just by the shape of the leg, he's leading you around back up to the other side of the butt, the, the glutes, and the other side also pointing you down and slightly around, down. This is the trochanter here. This is where the leg bone is. Down and slightly to the left. And if we follow the glute, the actual the glute here, the line where the glute meets the thigh, that is also a boundary. It's a contour and it's an arrow, arrow, arrow. And he's also leading you with tone. I was using highlight in this case right here. He's leading you with highlight. You see that? That's a highlight, drawing the highlight. And then he gives you a little bit of tone to describe the form in the middle. And then a little bit of tone to describe the form as it turns away from you because the contour is alive. It's what he's saying is this isn't just the edge of a thing, it's the corner of a thing, and it's also more stuff that you can't see. He's trying to trick you into thinking there's more stuff that's in you know the Z space where this figure is turning away. And then that intersection is a line. I drew it with a with the hard line right here. I drew it with the hard line right here, but in the original, it's it's a tone. And I bet if you look closely, the brush strokes are going this way. I almost guarantee that they're going this way. What he's doing is he's con consciously, and then here's some highlight right here. Highlight is a corner. Highlight is a corner. And then this is the core shadow, which is essentially a soft contour. The core shadow is a contour, soft internal contour. Contour is the edge of a shape. The core shadow represents the edge of a shape that is created by a difference in value created by lighting, light on form. You see how, because this is just one example, because the contour of the hip leads you up and over, contour of the right hip leads you up and to the left, contour of the left hip leads you down and to the right. The contour of the right hip leads you down and to the left. So you see he's basically drawing an egg, just like what I said up here. You cannot have a box until you draw the sides first. You cannot create the illusion of a three-dimensional box on a piece of paper until you draw the sides correctly, right? <laughs> if the sides look like don't look like a box, you have box you can render for 100 hours and it ain't going to look like a box. So. Same with the figure. If the sides, the contour, are drawn correctly, are designed to feel 
to trick the mind into thinking it's a figure, then we can begin to reinforce that with the internal corner, which we'll talk about next. So that's more of a structural idea. I just want you to show, and this is just one example. If you look at the leg, the leg does the exact same thing. There's so many nuances to his contour. I could talk about contour for 10 hours, but um, we got to move on here. So this is just another example of how arguably the greatest technical realist in history pays attention to 2D graphic design and in figure drawing, that is the contour. Our final lesson is structure. And we're going to look at the great Diego Velasquez. Diego Velasquez is uh, known for more of his portrait painter. He was a Spanish artist, painted royalty of his time, very successful, which is why we know him in history. He painted some of the most powerful people in his time. One of his many innovations or one of his many gifts that he gave the art world is his beautiful realism, the lighting, and his ability to create form. We're going to look at particularly today. This is one of his paintings here, the uh, Mars. It's a nude. And you can see just a brilliant, brilliant structure. So what is structure, briefly? Structure is two things. You can also call structure construction. The word struct is <laughs> in the same word. Construction. Form drawing. It's basically this. <laughs> it's basically this, right? Those of you who know me, been watching my videos for a while, you know I talk about this. It's basically this. We eventually need to make our forms look 3D. That is structure. How do we get there? Number one, characteristic. Number two, Position. What is characteristic? Characteristic is what we're drawing. Is it more eggy? Is it round and curvy? Is it more cylindrical? Is it boxy? Is it like a cone? Is it somewhere in between? Is it an egg and a cone? Is it a box and an egg? <laughs> is it a box and a cylinder, like your forearm? That is characteristic, is describing something with a simplified geometric form that kind of resembles closely whatever we're after. Obviously, for example, shoul this shoulder in this painting looks like an egg, right? It's your shoulder, your deltoid, especially muscular guys, muscular males who have big shoulder muscles. They look like big old, big old pumpkins. They look, to me, they look like pumpkins. Look like look like big old round round thing, and your arm obviously is very cylindrical. Your wrist can get your wrist can get quite boxy. Your lower forearm, where there's more bone exposed than muscle, bone and tendon, can get quite boxy. Your knee can get quite boxy. A lot of bone exposed there. Your torso, the torso here is essentially a big cylinder. It's also kind of boxy. So characteristic, and then position. Position is what it's doing in 3D space. Where is it? Where is it? What is it doing? That says where. <laughs> what is it doing? For example, this arm, this arm and the shoulder, right? It's in a certain position, right? If we draw it, let's say this way, more coming at us, you see it kind of makes the arm look like the arm, the arm has moved. Or we can go the other way. We can maybe bring the elbow in more towards his body, for example, just for example, you see? So it's a different position. The knee. The knees, in figure drawing a lot, I see a lot of students struggling with the knee, including myself. It's very difficult to draw, right? The knee has to have an accurate description of its position. If you don't, it will look off, right? Those of you who have tried to draw legs in figure drawing, you know it's not easy to describe the position of the leg accurately. 
if you want the realism. So that is the importance of position. So all of this is structure. So we can learn that from the great Velasquez. Let's take a look here. There's so much good stuff here. Let's look at his torso again. There's many ways to study um, a Velasquez. I like his portraits, his tonal composition. His fabric is exquisite. So I'm going to try to respect his The original, respect his drawing as best as I can, try to represent the drawing as he intended. So this in itself is a, is a wonderful learning opportunity there. couple of nice structural details here. The thing I'm looking for is corners and ends. So structure begins with corners and ends. So for example, if you want to draw a three-dimensional looking cylinder, right? You need the sides, the contour, right? Just like we saw with Bouguereau. You can't draw the cylinder until you show us the sides. And then and then what? And then, okay, well, now we have the sides, Chris. Then what? Well, for it to be a three-dimensional cylinder, we need to eventually show where it ends, the top and the bottom. So that's where we do this. We just basically firmly define the top or the bottom. We can just, like, imagine we take a knife <laughs> and just cut, cut this big, long tube that we're just trying to make. So now we got the end. So that's great. And then we need the corner. So the corners, there's one right here. There's the end, that's, that's a corner. That's a corner, right? From the contour, the new slice, the new face, the new plane. That's a corner right there, right there, right there. And we also, the skilled draftsman, the skilled realism, will also give you the corner in the middle. And that is structure right there. This is a corner and we get this corner with light and shadow in this case. So typically when we draw the figure, we need to shine a light on our models. The 19th century, well, not, not, not just 19th century, but Realist masters that we look at, they used single source lighting, academic lighting. It gives us an advantage of that is it gives you a very clear corner. It, my friends, that is the ticket. Where do you see that in Velasquez? Of course, right here, right here, right here. I'll show you what I mean. So let's just look at his chest. The chest, the nature of the chest muscle, pectoralis, is a box, especially on males, because males, especially lean, muscular male, pectoralis, your chest muscle, pectoralis major, there's two of them. The big one is essentially a box. It's a big, flat, kind of boxy-looking muscle. So we can... Use a bit more straights as we draw, a bit more of a straight application of our marks. Forcing the corner. Little cast shadow is a cast shadow, but there's a little nugget. If you look at the original painting, look at the original painting right here. There's a little patch of dark. You see that right where my pointer is? Right here. Little patch of dark. Little patch of dark right there in the shadow of the chest. That may seem insignificant. You may think, oh, that, I, I don't, what, what, what's the big deal, Chris? 
that is not insignificant. What that is, is a masterful and skillful drawing of the edge of the pectoralis muscle. That's what he's doing right there. He's basically drawing for you with a subtle color and value shift. That is how you draw a shadow. So this is a lesson in technique as well, on rendering as well. That is how you draw detail in the shadow by suggesting, by minimal effortless marks as much as possible, effortless. Effortlessness takes mastery, but you know what I mean. <laughs> don't don't overwork the shadow, and that's what uh, Velasquez does right there. So, so create the boxiness. What else? What else? The torso. The torso is a cylinder and a box at the same time. At the contour, I feel pretty good about my contour. The inside is hidden inside is hidden we can see a little bit of the contour of the torso at the pit of the elbow right here you can see a little bit of his abdomen but the left side of the rib cage is hidden under the arm so we can't see it but we can see the right side so now now we're a little bit we're a little bit in trouble so how does Velasquez create structure? He does it with dark accent right there. So where the, where the, the bicep, I said the arm meets contour of the bicep, meets the contour or meets the form of the torso, he puts a dark accent there, and there probably was on the base because of the lighting. There was a naturally dark accent. It's called occlusion shadow. So this is a sh shadow where two forms either touch or become very, very close. Not a lot of light gets in there. No light gets in there, really. And it creates a dark, 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 deep, dark shadow. So that's what he's doing. He's defining that. And he's giving you a little bit of drawing using the serratus in this case. Serratus are these finger like muscles that sit on your rib cages, sort of. They help, they're part of your shoulder joint. And then he's giving us the bottom. There. So he's he's like he's like, hey guys, I know I hid, I know I hid the side of the box, right? Remember I said we can't draw the we cannot create a 3D box until we draw the sides. It's like Hey guys, I know I hid the side. I know it's important. So I'm just I'm going to use other other techniques, other strategies to give you guys the side. Is, is that okay, guys? Will you forgive me? And of course we say yes. So that's what he's doing here. Shadow, core shadow shape. And then the center line, which is the split between the abdominal wall, center and a box. So this creates a little mini box. So this is important. I just want to quickly pause here and stress how important this is. If your figures are flat, if you like my work, if you found me on Instagram and you say, oh, I like Chris Legaspi because he knows how to shade. He knows how to do cool shading. Oh, I like Sargent because I like his shading. Oh, I like whoever, this guy I saw on Art Station. His shading is nice. I want to do shading like that. And then if you're shading, want, if you want nice shading, what you're saying is, I want to create the illusion of form, light. They can't exist without each other. So anyway, so here, here's why it's important. Side, side, corner, corner. See that? Corner, 
side, corner, side. Contour, side of the box, corner of the box, side of the box, outer edge, contour. Same thing, the whole torso, out, outside of the box, side of the box, corner, boop, 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 or corner, boop, boop, or corner, boop, boop, boop. You see that? Everywhere, well, that's a cast shadow, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of a corner. So we want the box. This is how it's done. Boop. Every time you give us a cast shadow, a coarse shadow, you're drawing a corner. So that is how you get the form. So this cast shadow can't be taken lightly and it can't be, it can't just be copied. You can't just look at the original master painting or the if you're drawing from life or from reference, you can't just say, oh, I see a coarse shadow. I'm going to copy coarse shadow. No, coarse shadow is a corner of a box. So remember, position is nature, is the character of the thing and the position. So instead of copying the core shadow, think of it as how can I design this shape to draw the form that I need to create a realistic illusion? How can I draw this shape, this corner and this corner and this face because remember a box has sides has faces and corners so how can i draw this face of the box and the corner to create the illusion of a form that i want if you want torso it's kind of going to be kind of eggy and boxy at the same time you want abdomen, it's kind of like a torusy. Like right now, let's just take a look quickly at fold in his abdomen. These are essentially what's called a torus or a donut. A donut a torus is a is a geometric description of a donut. <laughs> it's, it's a donut. It's a the donut. Um, a tire tube, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's a torus. So the torus. For us to make these wrinkles and folds in his abdomen feel, quote unquote, real, we need to first describe their characteristic torus, donut long, in this case, it's a long skinny donut, roll of clay, sort of. And then we need to design the edge of it and then the individual corner see that little shadow underneath the uh, the wrinkle the donut of the wrinkle of his belly is also a mini corner and then this is cast shadow which we can use to draw cast shadow has quite a, is a different different function it's a different creature than a form shadow Close with this pec muscle right here. So this pec, see this little shadow shape? It may seem like insignificant. You may seem like, okay, well, I really don't know why that's there, but I see it, so I'm going to copy it. So that, that's, that's, that it, there's, there's more to this. What this is is a corner, right? So again, when you go to draw the when you do a copy or when you go to draw your own chest muscle in this light remember this lesson from velasquez is that this shape has significance so we don't want to just copy what we see we want it to if we're doing a master copy we want to look and understand why he made the shape that way 
why he made it that edge, why he made it that value, why he made it that hardness or whatever. What he's saying is, this is a corner of a box. Remember the pectoralis muscle, that's what this is. Pectoralis muscle is flat. It's quite rough. It's kind of boxy. It's, it's, it's a flat, wide and flat shaped kind of muscle. He wants to describe the boxy nature of it, the rectangular boxy nature of it. And he does that with shadow. And he also wants to say, well, it's it's also perspective. It's, it's not. I don't want it. I want it to. I don't want it to bulge out as much as the one in the front. So I'm going to soften it. So that's that was that's also edge control and things like that. But that is a box. That is a corner. This chest is a corner. So that is the lesson here. And you see right here. We'll close with this. The difference between these two is significant meaning in terms of look how pronounced this corner is and this corner they are both the same thing we're both there this is a drawing of the same exact thing pectoralis muscle chest muscle we have two of them left and right right this pectoralis muscle and this they're essentially the same but look at how he draws it here versus how we drew it here so that in itself is a lesson that tells you to pay attention to how and why that shape exists, how and why that shape describes form, how and why this one is more boxy. Why did he make it more boxy, more pronounced, more contrast than this one? And what, what it communicates. This one communicates stronger lighting, firmer edge, harder form, and also, which is another idea, another visual component, it also communicates depth, D-E-P-T-H, depth, 3D space, believe it or not. So that is what separates the masters from everyone else, and that's what we want in our work. We want the ability to communicate several things with each one of our marks and our shapes and our tones and our values, and that's what it does here but particularly in terms of form this is how it begins we have to draw the corner of the box and velasquez this example of the mars here is just absolutely beautiful example how to draw a form using very simple uh, what steve houston calls the box logic or box modeling